Hello everyone, Denise here. Today I'm doing a review video on the Lazy Days yarn by Lion Brand. This yarn I purchased at Hobby Lobby a while back and then once again when it was on clearance at Hobby Lobby I picked up a few. Uh, this yarn is a chain style yarn. This is 3.5 ounces, 100 grams, 179 yards, and 164 meters. It is a medium weight four. It is 100% polyester. Calls for a J hook or 6mm knitting needles. Uh, this is really um, nice for home decor objects because you can machine wash and dry it. It is a nice soft yarn and it is something that I think I will use probably on a cushion outside at some point. Uh, but today I'm going to make a bucket bag. So I have three colors here. This color is Wind Chime, and then I have a darker gray, and it is called Pewter, and then I have a blue, and this is called Bluebell. So I have those three colors in this yarn. I'm gonna start with the gray here, and I'm going to make a bucket bag. Yeah, I have my 6.0 mm. J hook and I'm going to start with a magic circle. If you do not like a magic circle, go ahead and chain four and join. This is how I do mine. I create an X, pull up a loop, I reposition the yarn, the working yarn in my hand, and then I usually chain one to secure it, but I'm going to chain two because that's how we need to start. So chaining two, and now we're going to start our linked stitches and we're going to be working in the round. So we're going to put all of our linked st stitches into this ring. So you want to go into the second loop from your hook here, second chain, pull up a loop, go into the ring and pull up another loop. You want to yarn over and go through all three. Sorry, this is a bit fidgety. I'm having a problem holding onto the yarn. There we go. Okay, first linked half double crochet made. And we're going to go back into that stitch. Pull up a loop, go back down into the ring and pull up a loop, yarn over and go through all three. We're going into this middle bar here. So you'll see three, one, two, three. I'm gonna go into this one. Pull up a loop. Go into the ring, pull up a loop. Run over and go through all three. I'm gonna do that until we have 10 linked half double crochets. Okay, I'm going to cinch this. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the beginning, linked half double crochet. We have 10 linked half double crochets for our round one. We're going to double these stitches, so we're going to put two uh, linked half double crochets in each one of these stitches. So we're going to end up with 20 at the end of round two. This is exactly like increasing the top of a hat. I do have a hat tutorial with a stitch and a washcloth tutorial with a stitch and some fingerless mitts with a stitch. So if you're interested in any of those, I will link them below. But each round you're going to continue increasing until you get the bottom diameter, the size of your bag that you desire. So we're always going to chain two Go into that second chain, pull up a loop, go into the same stitch down here and pull up a loop, 
yarn over and go through all three. That's our first one. We need two in that stitch, so go into the second bar, pull up a loop, same stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through all three. Now we have two linked half double crochets. We're going to do that in each stitch all the way around. So we're just going to continue on just like we were doing last round, except in each stitch we're going to have two linked half double crochets. My bag is not going to be very large because right now I'm not going to make a technical bag here. I'm going to make a covering for a container on my desk. But it is made the same exact way as the bag. So I will show you that container in just a moment here. You could do, do this um, concept with a, a soup can. If you want to get a soup can, take off the label, a jar, take off whatever label, and then you can create a covering for that and put it on any desk or surface to keep pens in, crochet hooks in, whatever, whatever you need, paintbrushes, cleaning supplies if they're smaller, uh, smaller scrub brushes and whatnot, bottle brushes. And this is a simple enough stitch to where doesn't take a lot of work to create it, but it does have a little more interest than just a regular half double crochet. And if you're bored of regular half double crochets, it's more interesting for you to make it. Count my stitches, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, that is correct. Join in the round. Let me show you my container that I'm covering. So I have these containers and they're pretty, they're cute, um, but I just wanted to put a covering over at least three of them, if not all four. They are planters, but I use them just to put uh, like stitch markers and stuff in on my desk. So I just keep them in here, except I changed the entire theme of my room in here. And so I kind of just wanted to cover them with something so that they matched. I still want to use them, but uh, I thought I would cover them. But this would be good for if you have a jar or a metal can or whatever container that you don't like the outside look of, you don't want to paint it, you just can cover it with a crochet covering. So I am not big enough on the bottom of mine yet, so I need to keep increasing. I'm going to go one more round, but I will tell you how to keep increasing so that you can keep increasing on yours if you want to make a large bucket bag. So each round you will chain two, and last round we did two linked half double crochets in each stitch because we are increasing just like on a hat. So this round we would do two linked half double crochets in the first stitch and then one linked half double crochet in the next stitch and then two and then one and then two all the way around. And then after that you would do your beginning two linked half double crochets and then you would do one one and then two one one and then two so each round start with chain two go into that second chain pull up a loop go into the same stitch and pull up a loop yarn over go through all three go into that second bar pull up a loop same stitch 
fill up a loop, yarn over, go through all three. Then the next stitch, we are going to just put one linked half double crochet. And then the next one, we're going to do two. We're going to do that increase all the way around. So I will meet back up with you in a moment when I get to the end of my round. Okay, I'm to the end of my round. When you're increasing, you will always end with one stitch in your last stitch. So if you start with two, you'll always end with one stitch in your last stitch. So we should have, let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 stitches. Slip stitch into the beginning of your first linked half double crochet. I do believe this is large enough to go on the bottom of my container. Yes, it is. So I'm going to stop increasing on this one. If you want to keep increasing, you increase just like you would on a hat. Uh, I do have that hat tutorial down below. I did increase more than this on my hat, but essentially what you will do is you will increase your stitches in between your two linked half double crochets by one each entire round. So this round, if I was going to increase, I would do two in the first stitch, one, one, and then two. One, one, and then two all the way around. After that, if I wanted to keep increasing for my bucket bag, I would do two, one, 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 two, one, 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 two, one, one, one. Round after that, I would do two, one, 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 two, one, 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 one. So if that doesn't make sense, ask me and I will try to explain it better, but that's essentially what you will do to keep increasing the bag. So once you get to the point where you are done increasing, then we're going to start working up the body of the bag. So we are going to chain two and we're still going to do linked half double crochets, but we're going to turn our work just slightly and work the stitches in a different spot than right here. And that is to make our bag sit flat. So we are going to start with this stitch and we are going to go into our second chain just like we normally would, but we're gonna turn our work a little bit now and look. So on this side of our work, we have the top bar that we're looking at right here that we normally would go into, but we're gonna go into the top bar and this bar right here. Now that's going to turn our work just slightly enough to where it will make our bag sit flat. So yarn over and pull up a loop and yarn over and go through all three. Okay. So we're going to do one linked half double crochet in each stitch now we're done increasing. So in the next stitch we're going to go into our second bar here like we always have been. Pull up a loop. Go into our next stitch but remember on this round only we are going to go into this loop and this loop. Yarn over, pull through all three. It's going to give us, it's going to give us more of a lean to the inside so that when it sets down, it stands up. It goes straight up instead of out. And if you don't want to do the stitch this way, that's fine. Your bag will just be a little more rounded on the bottom. That's all. It's not a big deal. Use my middle finger to push that second loop a little better. Okay. 
So you can see the difference there. If we were going to go into it normally, this is what it would look like. See the difference there? We have an extra bar down here if we do it uh, the way that I am specifying, and then that gives a little surface for the bag to sit. So I'll meet you at the end of this round. I have 30 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch to my beginning linked half double crochet. And if you look now, you'll see that it's starting to turn up, which is good. That's what we want. So we're going to continue that each and every row for the entirety of your bag that you, however tall you want your bag. And then I will meet back up with you once you get to the length of your, the height of your bag that you want. I'm going to go as high as my little pot here, and then I will meet back up with you when I am at that height. Okay, once you get to the top or the height that you're making your object, there's a couple of different options I like to do for bags or containers or whatever. <laughs> um, I like to either do handles or um, I like to do a little, like a decorative stitch along the edge. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do either with this, but I will show you how to do both of those. So I like to do um, handles on some of my bags and essentially what you need to do is skip as many stitches as you want the handle to be wide. Pretend that this is a full size normal bucket bag. If you want the handle to be as wide as your hand, skip that many stitches. You would just count, you know, as many as you need to and then chain that same amount. So if I was going to make one as wide as my hand, I would probably go to here, maybe even further, and then count those stitches. So two, four, six, eight, I would go 10 stitches. So I would chain 10, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then skip those 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. I would put, uh, depending on what stitch you want to use, um, I would probably do single crochet because that's just the easiest. Once you get to the top of the bag that you want to, you know, finish off, you don't want to add a lot of stitches to the top. And then I would go directly across from that handle to get to the other side. So I usually fold my project in half and then I would mark that with a stitch marker and do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just going to put my finger here because it's not very far. Let's see, I did one, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do six stitches and then do the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to chain my 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Skip my 10 stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then put a single crochet over here and around to the other side. Now we are to our beginning. So what I would do is just do a single crochet and then put 10 single crochets into the chain. So just go around it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, and then start again. Same spot here, single crochet, and go all the way to the other side where you did the other handle. Now, depending on the look that you're going for, you may want to do another round of single crochet. 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that same one there for stability. you want a stronger handle, you can do another round of the single crochet. If not, you can fasten off by slip stitching at the beginning. So let's take a look at it. This is what it would look like if it was full size. You know, a very large bag, a handbag, a purse, a bucket bag for your yarn on the floor, whatever you want to make it for. If you want a hand size one, do it that way. If you want it wider, go wider. It's up to you, however you want to do it. The other thing that I like to do is a, what's it called? A pico stitch. Just pokes up just a tiny bit. It's really cute. Not super fancy, but decorative. Simple and nice. So at the beginning of your round, you would chain three slip stitch into the beginning chain there, that first chain that you had, and then you can either slip stitch or single crochet into that stitch and then do, you know, go around as many as you want. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then chain three, slip stitch to the beginning chain that first chain that you did, and then slip stitch to your stitch. Single crochet. Or you could slip stitch all the way around as well if you don't like the way that looks. So uh, I slip stitched into the first one and then did a single crochet. Instead of doing single crochet, you could do slip stitch all the way around the edge. stitch to your first chain, slip stitch in the stitch. Oops. Slip stitch over. You're not in that one, so one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, Slip stitch to your first chain, slip stitch into the same stitch, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, slip, slip, one, Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, slip, slip, one, two, three, four, five. Two, three, slip, slip, slip stitch to your beginning. I'm 
happened to get to the beginning, you can tie and fasten off. Now we'll show you what that looks like with the container in it. If not, it's just going to have tiny little pop-ups all around. I think they're called picos. Just a little decorative touch. You could add beads to those. You can do whatever you want. Um, so those are your some of the options. I mean, there are plenty of edgings you could choose from. But for a container that I'm going to reach in and out of, I don't want too complicated of a stitch to be grabbing things or snagging things. So I will probably not have either. I will probably just have a nice uh, basic edge uh, because I think it looks good with this container. This yarn pulls out really nicely. Frog's back, ribs, whatever you want to call it. I think I think it looks best this way in my opinion and it is my container so I guess that's what matters most, right? <laughs> this yarn is very stretchy just so you know. Um, it can go way further than this. If I wanted to stretch this out to something way taller, this would fit. It just gets a lacy look to it. So I'm gonna keep the stitches scrunched because I think that looks nicest. I think it's very nice looking. I like this stitch a lot. It has uh, become one of my favorite stitches. So I'm going to make at least three, if not four more of these and I will show you my bag when I have it. Done. Okay, so as you can see, I got my bag done. Uh, it's about 11 inches in diameter and about nine to 10 inches tall. Um, it could stretch further, but I just wanted it the size to fit some yarn in uh, to put on the floor next to me in the living room when I work, uh, like to keep a project that I have uh, in progress in it. Uh, the containers, uh, I only did two of those and that is because I purchased some of these containers on Timu. I will leave an, an affiliate link below that will get you a percentage off your first order or item and then give you, a, like, I believe, a coupon bundle. Uh, I'll leave the details below. But that is an affiliate link for, for Timu. And from this video on, all my links that I put for Timu will be an affiliate link, just so you know, since I am one now. So the bag itself, I did, I used two balls of the wind chime color, the lighter gray, and then I only used a partial of two balls of the pewter color. Uh, I wanted to stop, I wanted the color to be around the same amount. Uh, the bottom of the bag is made in wind chime, so that is why I used two full balls of the wind chime color. Uh, the top is just in the round there, so it is only two partial balls of the pewter color. So for total, you know, if you're going to purchase this and make this, if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to separate the color and have it be around the same amount you could just keep going with your the rest of your balls of yarn and finish out that color what i did for the handles for the bag was i chained 10 and i skipped 10 stitches and then i continued on with a linked half double crochet stitch and then i did uh, one round on top of that and then another round after that. So this is very easily customizable to the size of container or bag that you want and I think it ends up being a very lovely stitch worked up. It, it's way more interesting to me than like a normal half double crochet or a single crochet bag and this yarn is really soft and amazing. So my bags, uh, it's a little bit drapey actually. It was done with two strands of yarn, but this yarn is so pliable 
that uh, I think you could definitely make garments out of this. It's, it's very pliable. I'll show you on here. It's so soft and pliable, like you could easily make clothes out of this. This is the pewter color. It's 100% polyester, so the fabric would not breathe. It'd be a better fall or winter garment if you're going to make a garment out of this. But it, it is very nice next to your skin. So if you wanted to make pillows out of this, that'd be great. It's nice to touch. So I think it'd make a great blanket as well. So that that is my tutorial for the bag slash bucket slash container. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Lazy Days is a great yarn. I hope they keep selling it. Uh, I purchased several of mine full price at Hobby Lobby and then they clearance them out. So I hope Lion Brand keeps selling this yarn. It's a really good versatile yarn. I like it a lot. I'm going to give it a solid 10 out of 10. I don't see anything wrong with this yarn. I don't have any wants from this yarn and I don't, I don't have any negatives of this yarn either. So I'll give it a solid 10 out of 10. It's a great yarn. I, I really appreciate it and I appreciate Lion Bread bringing it to us. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And until next time, guys, bye.